things. It's a while since I ripped apart a USB power supply, but I bought a second-hand Tascam DR1 recorder a few weeks ago, and this all Lola power supply was thrown in. I have other power supplies, such as this 10-watt uh, Apple one, so I have no intention of using this. Instead, I thought I'd rip it apart and see how well it's made. First of all, a quick look around the outside. It's about the size of a UK mains plug and has two USB ports on the bottom with a maximum rated output of 2.4 amps. The text on the inner face gives a model number of TH19, the current rating, a correctly spaced CE mark amongst others, and the company's postcode of M89UE, or at least what was their postcode as they now moved across the road. Searching the part number brings up an Amazon listing where it's priced at $6.99 and has some interesting review photos which give a hint as to what's inside as two of them broke apart when pulled out of the socket. Anyway, my adjustable dummy load can hit that rating, so before taking it apart, let's see how it fares. I've done this test on counterfeit Apple chargers in the past, and when they get anywhere near the claimed current rating, the voltage sags drastically. This one, as you can see, manages quite happily, all the way up to 2.4 amps. My genuine iPad charger is rated at 2 amps and gets to just under 2.2 amps before the voltage drops quite sharply. So let's take this one past the 2.4 amp mark and see what happens. Okay, not bad. It manages 2.7 amps before it starts to tail off. So pretty good. It's certainly better than the frankly awful counterfeit Apple ones. Anyway, let's see what's inside. In. So what it's got is we've got the pins and they have this plastic sheeting then which protects the the pins from the rest of the circuit board. So the connect the mains connections then come in right at the top. And that is the board. First impressions are good because we've actually got some plastic separator there, so all that stuff does have another sheet between uh, between it and the the low voltage side because you obviously wouldn't want any of this stuff getting anywhere near the mains so that's good to see and in fact it folds over on the underside giving it even more protection with that so there's two layers of it between the input pins and any of the solder connections there so there's less chance of them punching through Okay, so I've managed to trace out the schematic, which I think is complete. It's all driven by a chip marked GJJ, which is actually an AP3771 by Diodes Incorporated. Possibly of interest is that the application circuit shows no input filtering. A similar chip with the same pinout, the SF6761S, doesn't have any input filtering either, and the datasheet suggests it's a low EMI design, so perhaps it doesn't need it. The Orlola power supply seems to have followed this closely and has no input filtering either nor does it have any shielding inside the case, although if you rip open an iPad charger, there's no shielding in there either. In hindsight, I should have tested with a radio or a scanner nearby to see if it's putting out a lot of electrical noise, but it's done now. Back to the circuit diagram, there's no bleed resistor across the high voltage capacitors, although being a sealed unit, it ought not to need one, and it'll be slightly more efficient without one. The bulk of the circuit is the black art that is switch mode power supply design, so I won't go into that. There'll be proper schematics online discussed by people who actually know how this sort of stuff works. Over on the secondary side, things get a little simpler again. A half-wave rectifier and smoothing caps, albeit with a resistor in series with the diodes. Then the supply goes straight to a pair of USB ports. You'll see that each USB port has a set of resistors across the data pins though. These are used to tell the connected device the maximum current it can draw and use two different standards, 
Samsung devices will recognize the upper port as a 2 amp charger. Apple devices will recognize the lower port as a 2 amp charger. As far as I'm aware, other devices will probably recognize one or the other port as either a half or 1 amp charger. And that's it. In conclusion, it would appear to be relatively well designed, certainly from an electrical isolation perspective. As long as it doesn't need the filtering components that it clearly doesn't have. The one thing that clearly lets it down from those photos online is the lack of glue holding the two halves of the case together. They really need to get their act together there and bond the case halves together properly. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.